Well, take your Bible and turn with me, if you will, to Matthew, Matthew chapter number 5, and uh, definitely I appreciate Martha coming today because this will tie so well into our message today on letting your light shine, letting your light shine. And uh, as we uh, saw last week, uh, we were talking about uh, uh, praying uh, for our communities, and we talked about bless every home. Uh, as we think of that emphasis, I want to continue to encourage us. That's one way we can be a light uh, is through the bless every home ministry. Uh, Jeremiah, I think we've got a slide on that maybe in the next one, uh, the blesseverhome.com. And I encourage you uh, to take a moment, uh, even in the service, but after the service probably is better, uh, to sign up, to uh, be a part, and you'll pray for the, for the neighbors around you. In fact, every day, uh, if you choose, or the days that you choose, they'll send you a list of five neighbors uh, and where they live, and you pray for them, you encourage them. Uh, the scripture is uh, normally given, a little scriptural prayer uh, to encourage us to pray, and even they'll give you a map to show you where it's located. Uh, on, on uh, that, that's my map, uh, showing the area around my house uh, as I've been praying. And then uh, just today I went and looked, and uh, sure enough, they have an app for your phone. If you would like to uh, go to Bless Every Home, uh, load it on your app. Maybe you'd rather have it coming to your phone rather than coming to your email, and you can participate in it that way. Looking for ways to pray looking for ways to share and to care uh, for our neighbors as we move uh, into, this, uh, into this time of uh, just seeing our neighbors as those for whom uh, the Lord died, those for whom we can encourage, invite to church, but most importantly, represent the Lord Jesus as a light in our community. So let's read about that light in Matthew as we stand together. Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 13. Jesus, on Sermon on the Mount, says this, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how will it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a bushel, uh, under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You have your scripture there. Let's read that verse one more time. Verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Dear Father, I pray that you will be glorified. You'll be glorified in this message. Lord, you'll be glorified in our lives. Lord, you'll be glorified in our light as it shines in the community. And Lord, I pray that you'll bless us and help us. Lord, as we open your word, Lord, as you challenge us, Lord, to be those who care and who share, be those who pray for our neighbors, and Lord, to represent you in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. As we look at this passage, as we look at this familiar passage, I know we've studied through this passage many times in the past 15 years, we see in this uh, Jesus' encouragement uh, to the disciples, encouragement to the people, and encouragement to us uh, that as we live our life, we are those who are to make a difference in people's lives. We are those who are to have influence in people's lives. We are those who are to make an impact in people's lives. And he gives two illustrations here. And as he gives these illustrations, they are for us to gain that aha moment, I understand that we are to be salt and we are to be light, salt of the earth, light of the world. We are to make a difference in the world that we are in. So many times we think about uh, international missions way off. We think about North American missions in our nation. But let me tell you, right where we are, we're called to be salt and light. And, and you think about that, and, and we could make messages on just the characteristics, but just briefly, uh, salt, what does salt do? Well, salt purifies, okay? Uh, salt preserves. Salt gives flavor. Uh, salt causes thirst that draws us to the living water, okay? Uh, as we think about being that salt, we are those who make that influence in our society. And then as we look at the illustration of light, light lifts up. I mean, in the darkest of nights, you're looking for that light, that ray of hope, that light in the darkness is going to say, 
Things are going to be all right. You're going to make it through, okay? Light illuminates, gives us an understanding better when we turn on the light. You're fumbling around in the dark. You turn on the light, things get clearer. We look at light and we think about it guiding us, whether it be a flashlight, whether it be the head beams of a car, whatever it be. Light helps guide us. Light gives us hope and life shines truth in our life. So as we think about this thought, it's who we are. I, I love this, this uh, passage because he doesn't say, you will be the light of the world. You will be the salt of the earth. No, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are the salt. You are light. Now, the key is, so many times we, dis, we, we, we will kind of dis, uh, put that aside and, and not take focus of that. And, and it's almost like, we dilute the salt, loses the savoriness. We cover the light, put it under a basket. No, don't do that. Take the basket off. The purpose of the light is to shine. The purpose of the light is to show forth the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's the, to make a difference in our community. And as we do that, as we make a difference in our community, then we are that light in the world. We are that salt of the earth. We are you see, we cannot not be who we are. Now, we can stop doing what we do, but you can't stop being who you are. And so as the light of the world, you are the light. You make a difference. You make a difference in your communities. All those around you should have their lives made different because you are in their sphere of influence. You're in their life. You're the one who is reaching out to them. So as we think about that, I thought, well, what ways does our light shine? You know, we think about sharing our faith, and that's definitely a part of, of how you let your light shine. But there are also other things involved in letting our light shine in our community. And so I listed five of, in the bulletin there. We'll just kind of think through these this morning. Maybe one of these will really catch on. And, and you'll say, Lord, I want to be that light who shines. Uh, again, I encourage us in Bless Every Home, where we start with those immediately around us. You know, the, the best ones to shine forth our light is those closest to us, maybe even in your home itself. But as we think about that, letting our light shine, five things. Number one, we let our light shine through the hope that we have in our life. Through the hope that we have in our life. You see, as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have hope. Take your Bible. Turn all the way back in the back of the New Testament to 1 Peter. 1 Peter, chapter number 1, Peter writing, Peter the apostle, uh, Peter the one who walked on the water to Jesus, Peter the apostle who was on the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter the one who denied Jesus, but then who, who was restored by Jesus. G Peter writes this in verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again, to a living hope through the resurrection of the Lord Je of, the, of Jesus Christ from the dead. He has begotten us. We are born again into hope. Let me tell you, we live in a world that's hopeless. We live in a world who is, who is training to find something to find hope in. And on every turn, there's war. On every turn, there's disasters. On every turn, there's sickness. On every turn, there's death. It just seems like it goes from one to another to another. And if you don't watch it, people in our world, they say, well, what is the use of living? What is, there is no hope. We have hope. We are begotten again to a living hope through the resurrection. Now, listen, this is the living hope we have to an inheritance you have something to look forward to. You have something that's being prepared for you. An inheritance that's incorruptible, that's undefiled, that does not fade away, who is, which is reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith and the salvation ready to be revealed in the last times. You have that which is guaranteed not by the bank. That's been the big thing this last week. I don't know if you've been watching all that, but the banks that have failed and the investors that have lost, but the people that, whose money were there, it's, it's insured by the FDIC. The government's going to back that. Let me tell you, we've got hope better than the government backing us. Amen? We've got the Lord Jesus Christ, his, res, his death on the cross and his resurrection, undefiled, incorruptible, that does not fade away, kept in heaven, reserved in heaven, kept locked in the safe deposit box of heaven. 
That's the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. You read on down a little bit further in this passage in chapter number 2, verse number 9. It says, you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own people, that you may proclaim the praise of him who called you out of darkness. You were in the darkness, and he's called you out of darkness. People in the darkness can be called out in Jesus Christ to light. You were in the darkness. He called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's the hope we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. But it's only in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not hope in your pastor. It's not hope in the church. It's not hope in doing good things. It's the hope in Jesus. See, there's only one way of salvation. There's only one who's given his blood for you and who's risen again. There's only one way to that salvation, and that's through the Lord Jesus. In fact, it says over in, in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, there's only one name given among men by which you must be saved. It's the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the hope that we have in Christ. You see, he said in John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He say, isn't it kind of exclusive, saying there's only one way? Praise the Lord, there's a way. Amen. I mean, God didn't owe us a way. God didn't have to make us a way. He gave us a way by his grace and mercy through the Lord Jesus Christ that we could have hope. You see, that's why our light can shine in the darkness of a world where we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, where we don't know what's going to happen when we go see the doctor. We don't know what's going to happen. Let me tell you. We can trust and have faith and hope in Christ because that hope is a living hope that does not fade away. You see, you have something to share to your neighbors. You have the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ, not just to get their life straightened out, not just to get them on the straight and narrow, not just to get them on the path you think they ought to go, but to point them to the Savior. There's only one Savior, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, that is the hope we have is in Christ and you're pointing people to him. You point people to the Lord Jesus Christ because he is our hope in all things. So don't let your light shine. Don't let your light shine. There, there may be some, some cause or maybe some challenge. I heard on the news this week of a group in, in Arizona, uh, a school system in Arizona. The school board voted not to allow the Christian college to send forth uh, their student teachers anymore because they were Christian. And how could Christians have anything good to say to the public in general? Let me tell you, we have hope. We have hope. The world don't see that, but we have hope. We're not trying to cram something down their throat. We're not trying to straight jack them. No, we're trying to set them free and give them hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. You have the hope of Christ. You have the hope of Christ. Share forth in your love and your care for other people the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have hope. Second thing that we have as we look at this, uh, as we think about light, we have the light of the attitude we have in our hearts and our life. There should be something different about you. People should say, whenever I see you go through challenges, whenever I see you living your life, whenever I see all that's going on in you, there's something different about you. You've got a different attitude. <laughs> what about your attitude? Amen? What about your attitude? So many times, I mean, our attitude isn't much different than the world, and it should be completely different than the world. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit of God living in you, producing that attitude that shows forth Jesus. You say, what attitude is that? Share it over in Galatians chapter number 5, verse 22 and 23. It's called the fruit of the Spirit. Notice, not the fruits of the Spirit. See, the, the Lord through the Holy Spirit gives us gifts of the Holy Spirit for his use. Each one receives gifts. No one has all the gifts because we work together. But these aren't the fruits of the Spirit. This is the fruit of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit living in you, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. What, do you not know that, the, that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Who's in you? The Holy Spirit of God dwells in your body. Let me give you a hint. You're spiritually possessed. You're possessed by a spirit, the Holy Spirit. And that should make you different than all the rest of the world whenever it comes to how you deal with people because you come at it from love. You look at each day with joy. You go through circumstances in peace. Whenever there's a challenge in your life, you go through it with, with long-suffering. You go through and you have kindness and you have goodness and you have faithfulness. You have gentleness. You have self-control. 
He said, but that's just not me. It may not be the old you, but I tell you, in the, whole, in the Lord Jesus Christ, as you've got the Holy Spirit, that's the new you. That's why he says over in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You are a new person in the Lord Jesus Christ. Your light's shining bright because you're different, because your attitude's different, because you're approaching life different. You have a different outlook on life. You have a different anticipation of the end of life because of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, that gives you a different attitude. That gives you a different perspective. That's why your light can shine with people that are wringing their hands. They do not know what happens after death. They don't know. They're just hoping somehow they're going to be good enough to make it. That their good things have outweighed their bad things. Let me tell you, no matter how many good things you've got, you what you still got? Bad things. You still got sin in your life. You still got brokenness. No one is righteous. No, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All deserve the death of hell. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. You see, that is the hope we have in him. And that's why we can have that renewed sense of our attitude. It's not a poor, pitiful me. It's not a glum doom and destruction. It's hope and peace and joy and love and goodness and gentleness through the Holy Spirit of God. Don't you just feel better already? I mean, you should feel better already knowing that's who you are. You don't have to succumb to the, to the dismay of the world. You need to lift yourself up above that and point people to the light you have inside of you, the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we have that hope in him. We have that attitude in him. And that's our light that's shining. Third thing we have, and that is the good works. I mean, that's what the passage is all about. He says there in verse number 16, uh, he says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I mean, we should be known as people who do good things for others. We should be those who, who reach out. Just as the Lord Jesus said in Matthew 25, he was hungry and, and we gave him something to eat. He was thirsty and we gave him something to drink. He was naked and we gave him something to wear. He was a stranger and we welcomed him in. He was sick and in prison and we visited them. You see, the, the good things that we do for other people should be not so that they would do something good for us. It's not building brownie points with God so maybe eventually he'll let us into heaven. No, it's a reflection of who we are in Christ. Our light is shining forth doing those good things. And as we do those things, then people see that and they glorify God. That's the, that's, the big, that's the big piece of it. For whose glory do you do what you do? Do you do it so that somebody will applaud you? Do you do it so that somebody will put your name on a plaque one day? Do you do it so that others will say, wow, there's a good person? Or do you do it so people will say, glory to God? You see, it's for his glory, it's for his honors, for his name that we do what we do, that we are who we are, that our light shines so that people will see what we do and glorify, glorify our Father who is in heaven. Over in, over in the book of, of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter number 5, verse number, verse number 11, all the way through there, Ephesians is one of my very most favorite books, but so is John and Matthew and Luke and all the rest of them, okay? But, but, but Ephesians I really enjoy because the first three chapters tell you how you can be a Christian. The last three chapters, how to live as a Christian, to walk worthy, to walk in love. But in Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 8, he says there, For you once were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Instead of doing the fruit, unfruitful works of the darkness of this world, do the fruitful works of the light of this world, the Lord Jesus Christ. Do those things that would bring glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as we think about that, we think about it's to be public. Do those things among men. 
We, we, we don't do it for our glory. We do it for God's glory. Do it for others seeing Jesus in you. Letting this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Not doing things for selfish ambition but in, or in conceit, conceit uh, but lowliness of mind. Let each one esteem others better than himself. So be, be before men. Be pleasing. You see, it's good works. It's what you would like others to do to you. I think there's a verse in the Bible about that over in Matthew's gospel. Do unto others as you'd have them do to you. That's the good things. It, it is productive. It's good works. It's something that would be helpful to somebody. And then you see it's praiseworthy because it's pointing people to God himself, pointing people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Your light is shining. It's shining forth of the, of the Lord in your life, showing forth whose you are. Let your light so shine. Uh, that light not only is the good works, but it's also seen in your generosity. Your generosity is that you go far above and beyond what is expected. You know, the world level is, here's kind of what's expected. Do some good things. But see, your whole life is given as a light to the world, as a light to those of here's what God has done for me. Freely I have received, therefore freely give. We saw last week over in um, Matthew's gospel, Matthew chapter 10. Uh, he says there to cast out demons. He says to preach. He says to do many great things. He says freely you've received. What you've received from the Lord, freely give it out. You see, as we think about doing the good things for others, a lot of times we're thinking solely, materially. We think about being generous with others. We just think almost exclusively, materially, economically, financially, which there's a part to that. But let me tell you, what you have received from the Lord is far more than what's in your pocket right now. It's far more than where you live. It's far more than what you drive. It's far more than material things. Let me tell you, the grace of God is one of the greatest gifts you've ever received. Because you see, you deserve zero. You deserved hell. You deserved death. You deserved punishment. You deserved separation. But God in his love and mercy has reached down to you in his grace and has given you salvation. You see, it's by grace that you've been saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. Not a worse lest any man should boast. That is what we have received. So as we have received that grace, what we did not deserve, what we did not earn, then may we freely give grace to other people. That may start right at your own house. That may be right in the midst of the people that you care for and love the most. Grace. Mercy. What you deserve, God withheld from you to give you his best. You see, so many times, if you don't watch, we're just like that ungrateful servant. We receive the grace of God. We receive the mercy of God. We receive all of that. And we, we say, thank you, God. But then there's our fellow man. There's our brother. There's our sister. There's our friend. And some little infraction. Something that they do against us. And we hold it on them. And we hold it on them. And, and we're going to make sure they pay for what they've done to us. I tell you what, praise the Lord. We don't have to pray for, for what we've done to the Lord Jesus Christ. He paid it for us. That's his grace. That's his mercy. And that's what he calls us to. That's our light shining as we have received grace, as we have received mercy, as we've received forgiveness. We are to give that. But Brother Tim, you just don't know what they've done. No, but I know what Jesus did. You see, it's not you forgive up to this point. No, we owed a debt we absolutely could not pay. Jesus paid it for us. He made the way possible for us. He has given us and given us and given us life and joy and peace and his Holy Spirit living in us. And we have received it. We've said, yes, Lord. And we've received it freely. Well, then let's give it freely. Let's give that hope we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, what he's done to us. Uh, he speaks to us kindness. He speaks to us love. Uh, he speaks to us over and over. The, the story, of course, which, which bears this so well, is the Good Samaritan. 
uh, in how that he went above and beyond, far beyond. Because he's a Samaritan. You'd think that Jewish man laying there on the side of the road, and the Samaritan come by, would we not say he got what he deserved? He hates my people. He wouldn't give me the time of day. He thinks I'm not even better than a dog. He treats me as a second-class citizen. He, he would not even walk on the same side of the street as me. He sees himself far beyond me, and now he's laying in the dirt, beat up and, and wounded. But the Samaritan didn't say any of that. You see, the Samaritan just simply went to him because he was moved with compassion because he was injured, and he bound up his wounds, and he put him on his donkey, and he carried him to the inn, and he paid for him, and he shared with him, freely you've received freely give. That's your light shining in the world. That's your light shining. Whenever you think about the light shining, what would I do, Lord? How, how would my light shine? Well, you share the hope that you have in the Lord Jesus Christ. You, you share the attitude that God has given to you. you. You would share all that the Lord has blessed you with. And as you have received generously, then you would give generously. So many times again, we get, anytime we hear the word give, we think financial only. I tell you, oftentimes that's the easiest of the things to give. Because whenever we get into giving and living as Jesus would, it causes sacrifice. Sacrifice in our life. We let our light shine so others can see Jesus living in us. And then lastly, we do have a mission. We do have a mission. You have a mission. Whenever you come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you go from living however you want to, just kind of helter-skelter through life, to having a, a cut-and-dry mission. You have a destination. You have a mission. You have something you've been placed on this earth to do. He said, but what on earth would that be? First and foremost, first and foremost, glorify God. Glorify God. You have a purpose now beyond just glorifying yourself, and that is to glorify God. Let your light so shine that they may glorify your Father who's in heaven. That's what you're living for. That's what you're going to school for. That's what you're working in your place for. Let me tell you, it's not by accident that you live here in Smith County, if you live in Smith County. If you come in here from someplace else, it's not an accident that you live someplace else. <laughs> you're, you're, it's not a surprise that, to God that you're there. He didn't say, well, I wanted you. No, you're exactly where you are to be. Let your light shine. In the job that you're in, let your light shine. In the school that you're in, let your light shine. In the family that you're in, let your light shine. You see, he has that place for you. You have a mission is where you are. So many times we think, well, if I were only uh, on this mission field, if I were only in this new church start, if I were only in Africa someplace serving the Lord, I tell you, it is tempting because whenever we are on mission, I mean, we're living just full out for the Lord. Brother Brad always would say, we, we live the life on mission that we always want to live. That's how we want to live, on fire for the Lord, completely given to him. I tell you, that's what we're called for. That's what we're called to. You have a mission to live and to love and to serve the Lord. You see, when Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment was, is he said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And the second is like it to love your neighbor as yourself. That's your mission. Whenever Jesus was getting ready to ascend into heaven in Matthew chapter 28, he said, go make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the age. Go and make people who are disciples. Go and make disciples like you've been made a disciple. Somebody shared with you. Somebody's taught you. Somebody's discipled you. Somebody's walked alongside you. Somebody has helped you. Help someone else. You see, that's how we continue to share the good news of the Lord Jesus, and it carries on. You have a mission. Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So it's not in your own strength. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit in you, living this life of mission. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you'll be witnesses, people who tell what's happened to them. 
in Jerusalem where you live, in Judea, the areas around where you live, in Samaria, to the people you don't like at all. Amen? I mean, that doesn't cut us off from responsibility. And to the uttermost parts of the earth, we live a life to let our light shine because there's people in darkness. I mean, there are actually people who have never put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. They are actually on their way to a literal hell. They're on their way to a literal punishment because the Bible is very clear. We all have sinned. We all have missed the mark, and we all deserve destruction. We're just sharing the good news. We're waving a flag. We're flashing the light and says there's a hope. There's a peace. There's a joy. There's that which you can have in Christ as you put your faith and your trust in him. You see, this thought of bless every home, we're going to keep working on it till we got 50 people, so you might as well go and set it up, okay? Might as well go ahead and get it on your phone, get it, get, get it going. Uh, uh, it's the whole idea of the bless every home, that you are a light. In fact, you're even called a light. You're a light to your neighbors. You're, you're to let your light shine. Let me tell you, as you're praying for your neighbors, you're going to be more acutely aware of letting your light shine. Whenever you got that disagreement going on, you're going to at least make sure the, the windows are down, okay? Yeah. You're going to make sure that, 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 that you don't get too bad of a testimony out there. You want your testimony to be strong. Why? Because you're pointing people to Jesus. I tell you, you don't want them to say, well, I would follow Jesus, but my no good neighbor, they do this and they do that. They go to church on Sunday, but they do this and they do that. Let me tell you, we need to let our light shine. He said, but that's just their problem. No, we're the light. We're the representative. We're the ones whose lives have been transformed by Jesus. Let's let our light shine. Let others see Jesus. And you, the old hymn says this. And we think together as we kind of prepare for, for our time of response. What are you going to do with the Lord Jesus? The hymn says this, while passing through this world of sin... Others your life shall view. Be clean and pure without, within. Let others see Jesus in you. Your life's a book before their eyes. They're reading it through and through. Say, does it point them to the skies? Do others see Jesus in you? Then live for Christ both day and night. Be faithful, be brave, be true. Lead the lost to life and light. 